Another characteristic of all living beings is the search for happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. Do you know anybody that wants to be on a bummer? You know, it's everybody's doing everything that they can to avoid it. And we have this really strange situation. Do you know anybody that's actually perfectly happy? Have you met anyone? Do you know anyone? Look, look at your parents. Who are the people that you actually know? Your parents? I mean, they're really perfectly happy, aren't they? Or, no. Your uncles and aunties, your friends, close friends, your boss at work. You just look at people. Who, who do you actually know personally, yourself, that lives in a state of real happiness? You know, if, we, if we're really thoughtful about it, I mean, we just like to fantasize. You watch movie stars and rock stars and just, you know, the idea of a, a, a picture. I mean, it's so ridiculous, the selfie now or whatever, you know. And, okay, as soon as people see the camera, it's all, you know, it's like, and, and they really want to make it. I mean, of course, for me, weddings are the most ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm a bit of a downer guy. On It's just like everybody wants to pretend. You know, the women are really going to work at getting super, super slim so they can fit into their sexy, gorgeous wedding dress, you know, and whip the guy into shape so he looks like Mr. Wright and it's going to be the perfect prop for the princess. <laughs> and then they're going to practice and then they're going to have all the photographers there and they're going to try and get it right because they want to catch that one moment of, oh, I was so happy. <laughs> and it's just a complete fantasy. It's a complete fantasy. There is this drive drive for happiness, the search for happiness. And yet we are constantly faced with the reality that our life is actually quite boring and lonely and sad. If we really want to be honest with ourselves, how are we doing when we turn out the light? when it's just me. I mean, people come home from work, what they call their home, and they come in the door. And if there's no one there, what do they do? Does anybody just sit down and relax and do nothing? I mean, the idea of being alone is kind of almost frightening, which is a whole nother subject. But, you know, everybody's like, they're constantly looking to occupy their headspace, whip the phone out, play a game, text someone, Instagram, try something, just anything, anything to fill up the space and not recognize this reality that we're really not very happy. In one day, how much happiness, I mean real real intense happiness does a person experience. I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe five minutes if you're lucky. When is the last time, you, a person asks himself, when's the last time that just in my daily life, when's the last, oh today, when's the last time I was just like overwhelmed with happiness? And most people will have to think about it and they, they can't really come up with anything. But if we put it down to five minutes, which is kind of, well, let's say 15 minutes in a day, you know, you've got a few th five, three minute spurts of happiness somewhere. How many minutes are there in a day? 1,440? Something like that. Probably got the math right. I don't know. 
or about 1,440 minutes in a day. And if you are happy for 15 of those, you're considered fortunate. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> what am I really living for? And why do I want to be happy? What's wrong with being on a bummer? What's wrong with being desperately sad and lonely? What is it that's driving us to constantly look for happiness, even though we really don't experience it? We look at others and we look at the movies and we look at this and we look at the papers and we read magazines and watch videos and we like to see snippets of people being happy. Of course, advertising is filled with it. Everybody's happy in the ads except the ones where they're trying to promote tranquilizers or something. <laughs> Everybody's, you know, and, and, and we think that this is really our birthright, that somehow we deserve happiness. Does anybody not think they don't deserve happiness? Isn't it common? Everybody thinks they actually deserve, they want happiness. But you look around you, you have not yet found anyone in your life that has come to the position of being perfectly happy, people that you know intimately and close, you haven't found anyone yet. And yet you still insist on this idea that this is an achievable state. Is this insanity or? No, it's not. It's, it's because it is a fundamental characteristic of the living being, of the spirit, the Atma, to exist in a state of not just happiness, but unimaginable blissfulness. This is called Ananda. This is the natural state for the living being to exist. And we have in, find ourselves in this world covered by this temporary body, living a temporary existence, but yet trying to make a permanent home here and always feeling uncomfortable, always feeling like there's got to be something else going on, looking for that happiness, searching for it, but always looking in the wrong place. This system of, of, of the actual science of yoga delves into and deals with mm, this need. It's a, actually a spiritual need that arises from the living being. And provides an actual opportunity to realize that potential. By nature, we are meant to be blissful. We are meant to be free from death. We are meant to exist in this state, but we do not find ourselves in it while we're occupying this body living in this world. 